Hi there. In this video we're going to take a look at finding common factors and common multiples using prime factorization. Let's just quick re quickly review the greatest common factor and the least common multiple. The greatest common factor is the largest whole number that divides evenly into two or more whole numbers with no remainder. So for example, 4 is the greatest common factor of 8 and 12 because 4 divides nicely into both 8 and 12 and it's the largest number to do so. The least common multiple, well the least common multiple is a number that has two or more given numbers as factors. For example, 12 is the least common multiple of 4 and 6 because both 4 and 6 will multiply to give you 12 and it's the smallest number that both of those numbers share as a multiple. To help me use my prime factors to uh, find the greatest common factor and the least common multiple, I'm going to use a Venn diagram. Just to remind you what a Venn diagram is, it's a diagram that lets us see what's common and different between two different sets or two different things. The different things have their own space on either side of the diagram, while the common things go right in the middle and show us what's common between the two different items. Let's look at an example. In this case, the person has already found the prime factors of the numbers 36 and 48. For 36, the prime factors are 2 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 3 multiplied by 3. The prime factors of 48 are 2 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 2 again multiplied by 3. We definitely have some common numbers, but how should we place them in the Venn diagram? Let's take a look. The first thing we should do is find what's common in both lists of factors. So what you'll notice right away is that we start to see little sets of numbers appear. There's a set of 2. That means that I have to place a 2 in the middle because it goes with both of these numbers. There's a second set of 2. Again, I have to place that factor in the middle because it goes with both 36 and 48. You'll notice then that there are two more uh, multi uh, factors of 2 for 48, but no more for 36. That means that these need to be placed only with 48, because it's the only number that still has any more factors of 2. Then you'll see that there is another factor of 3 for 36, and a factor of 3 for 48. So those numbers, I'll just use a different color there, those numbers do share and they need to be placed into the middle here as well. Finally, there's a lone solitary number 3 up here. That doesn't have a partner. It only belongs to 36 and so it loops all the way around over here. So basically, wherever we see a set of numbers that's represented in both, those numbers get placed here. They're what's common between the two. Anything that doesn't have a partner even if it's a number that's similar to one in the middle, as you can see, we've got twos here and twos here, three here and three there. If it doesn't have a partner in both lists, then it must go with only the number that we have uh, that's, a, that's a prime factor. Now that we know how to place our factors in the Venn diagram, let's figure out how to use them first to find the greatest common factor. There's a bit of a word hint here. GCF does stand for greatest common factor, and I've already talked about this section, the middle of the Venn diagram, being the, di the area for what's common. That means that if you can remember that verbal clue, you can keep in mind that the way to find the greatest common factor is to simply multiply the numbers that are in the middle, that are common with each other. So in this case, the numbers that are in the middle that are common with each other are 2, 2, and 3. So to find the greatest common factor, I simply have to multiply 2 times 2 times 3, and that's going to give me my greatest common factor. 2 times 2 is 4, times 3 is 12. So my greatest common factor is going to be equal to 12 in this case. If I find that there's only one number in the middle of my Venn diagram, then that number by itself is the greatest common factor. Now to find the lowest common multiple for these same two sets of prime factors, I need to actually really focus on the 
m, the multiple word, because that's going to be a clue for me. To do this, I need to take each prime factor from all parts of the Venn diagram. So here, the center area, and here, and I need to multiply them all together. I'm going to multiply all those numbers together. Okay, And that's going to give me 3 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 2 times 2. What I've done is I've found all of the numbers in my Venn diagram and I've multiplied them all together. I can solve this either using a calculator or using some mental math. 3 times 2 is 6, 6 times 2 is 12, 12 times 3 is 36, 36 times 2 is 72, and 72 times 2 equals 100. And 44. That means that the least common multiple for these two sets of prime factors is 144. That is the smallest number that both of these numbers will multiply to. Now it's time for you to test. The first step you should do is we'll look at these two sets of prime factors for the numbers 120 and 210. What I'm going to ask you to do is take a second pause the video and place these numbers in their appropriate places in the Venn diagram. Take a second and do that and then restart and take a look and see if you did it correctly. Let's see how you did. If I look at these two lists of factors I notice immediately that I've got a set of twos. That means that those twos are common between those numbers. That means I need to place a two inside the middle because it's common. But you'll notice that there are two more twos in these lists and no more in the list for 210. That means that these twos need to be placed in 120's section but nothing else can be placed there in 210's section. Then I look again and notice that there is a 3 in for the factors of 210 and a 3 for the factors of 120. That means that it is also a common number and needs to be placed in the middle. I also notice that there is a 5 for 210 and a 5 for 120. That means those are also common and need to be placed in the middle. Finally, I notice a 7 for 210. That 7 does not have a partner in the factors of 120, so that 7 needs to be placed right here under 210. So if you placed your numbers like this, you got it absolutely right. If you didn't, take a look and see. Where did you go wrong? What tripped you up? How can you correct that for next time? Now test yourself by taking what we've learned so far and trying to find the greatest common factor for 120 and 210 using the Venn diagram. Pause for a second, give it a try, and then come back and we'll finish it together. Okay, let's see how you did. If we remember correctly, to find the greatest common factor, I need to really stick with what's common between these two sets of numbers. That means I'm going to really focus on what is in the center of my Venn diagram, which means I'm going to take the 2, 3, and 5 that are there and multiply them together to give me a greatest common factor. 2 times 3 is 6, and 6 times 5 equals 30. So my greatest common factor for these two sets of numbers equals 30. Let's try the same thing to find the lowest common multiple for these sets of numbers. Once again, you test, and then come on back and we'll see how you did. Let's see how it went. Remember that when we're finding the lowest common multiple, we need to focus on multiplying all the numbers inside the entire Venn diagram. That means I'm going to multiply it this way. Two multiplied by 2, multiplied by 2, multiplied by 3, multiplied by 5, multiplied by 7. Once again, looking at this using a calculator or mental math, I know that 2 multiplied by 2 times 2 times 3 times 5 times 7 equals 840. So the lowest common multiple for these two numbers equals 840 and 40.